Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today I have John Lusher joining me. And this has been a real privilege. Now, at the beginning of the month, you guys heard the episode with Mike Garrison and Can I Borrow Your Car on Referrals? Well, guess how I met John? <laughs> Through a referral. referral. From our good friend, Mike. And exactly. John has been helping me with my websites, my branding, just a whole bunch of stuff. And we've really been connecting. And, you know, when I was thinking about, you know, who did I want on the Author <laughs> to Authority podcast, John was one of those first people on the list. Now, John is a chaos coordinator, <laughs> also known as the president of the Social Buzz Lab is a 25-year veteran of incorporating networking, marketing, and digital media to build robust relationships for individuals, nonprofits, organize, nonprofit organizations, and businesses. And prior to owning his own business, John spent 15 years in business development and marketing in the technology and restoration industries. Now, interesting thing, John was one of the keynote speakers at the inaugural Orange County Social Media Summit in May of 2012 and was voted one of the top 125 people to follow on Twitter. That is pretty <laughs> impressive. Now, when John's not working, he enjoys good conversations, a well-aged bourbon, and exploring the beaches of the world. Well, welcome to the show, John. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. I appreciate that intro. That uh, that what all that boils down to, and what it says, it just means that I'm old. All those years of experience, I guess. <laughs> but well, I'm, I I'm very glad say, to be the here. The beaches of the world, where I live, I'm 200 feet up from the Atlantic Ocean. So maybe at some point you'll have to come up for a visit and do some beach combing. I was going to say I would love to do some beach combing there, just because it's going to be uh, quite a different environment than most of the beaches I'm used to. Because I'm used to more of the uh, uh, you know the tropical type beaches, but that doesn't mean that uh, the beaches where you are are not lovely because they are. And it would be nice to explore those as well. <laughs> but no, I, I appreciate the introduction, and and I'm glad that that Mike inter introduced us. I I have the honor and privilege or uh if you want to think of a negative word to throw in there of knowing mike for a number of years <laughs> working with him over the years so <laughs> it's a, it's all good though we we like to you know poke at each other in, in that manner so it's okay <laughs> well i'm gonna make sure he listens to this just so he knows you've done it <laughs> please please do <laughs> so just before the show we were talking about missed opportunities on social media. And I, mm -hmm. I really want you to go into that today. But just before you do that, this is the first time on, on the Author to Authority podcast, hopefully not mm -hmm. the last. But hopefully. I'd like to take a couple of minutes and just introduce yourself, tell a little bit about mm -hmm. your story, and how did you become the chaos coordinator? <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, I'll back it up a few years and we'll, we'll get to that here shortly. Um, spent a lot of time in uh, direct business to business sales. Uh, that's where the, the technology piece uh, in my introduction came in. Uh, literally sold everything from uh, photocopiers to, wait for this, fax machines when they first became commercially <laughs> available. Told you I was old. Uh, all the way up through uh, telephone systems and uh, computer networks. So have a little bit of a uh, sales technology background, I guess you'd say, um, and which was a lot of fun, very interesting. But uh, at a certain point, I was like, okay, I could stay in sales my entire life and, and you know, make a good living at it. But, uh, you know, the older you get, the more that you want to do something more. And marketing has had always been uh, a passion of mine. And uh, in my sales career, I was doing a lot of marketing for myself. So uh, I was used to doing that anyway and started working with, uh, as you mentioned, some people in the restoration industry. And it's a, it, the restoration industry is, is a funny industry. They're the people that you call whenever a pipe bursts or you have storm damage. And for a number of years, they literally did no marketing, no advertising. They didn't have to. Uh, friends in the insurance agent's office would call them. They had all the business they could handle. Well, 
as more and more companies started having programs that you had to qualify for, these smaller independent restoration companies decided, we need a website, we need to market ourselves. And it was a good opportunity that I got to work with several of them in the marketing field. And all of this happened really when uh, people were finally saying, okay, I've got to have a website, but then what? Well, then social media started taking hold back in the early days of, you know, uh, life before Facebook or life when Facebook and Twitter was just really becoming widely known. I decided to go more into the marketing field overall. And as we were talking before, before the broadcast started, we actually had back in the day, in-person meetup groups, almost like networking groups that really their purpose was to talk to business owners about mm -hmm. here's how you use social media. Okay, you've got a Facebook account. Great. Now set up a page for your business. And fast forward from there to, to now, look at how much has changed over the past, let's just say, five to 10 years as far as the social media landscape. Um, but the reason that I have my title on LinkedIn as chaos coordinator is because if there's one thing about business and especially marketing slash social and digital media is the chaos is a normal everyday occurrence. Something changes almost every day. To give you a prime example, a lot of people have been complaining today that they're having problem with Instagram. Either uh, they can't access it, their app isn't working. A lot of accounts have seen their uh, follower count drop by thousands. Insights aren't available. So my point being is things change all the time. So I just felt like chaos coordinator was a good way to describe some of what I do. And it also gets people's attention and typically makes them ask a question. So fast forward to today, as, as I was saying, and really what, what we do, the Social Buzz Lab is a, is a digital marketing agency. That's our core. Uh, we also work with clients for tr traditional uh, what you would consider traditional advertising, traditional marketing, but we do websites. As you mentioned, we handle a lot of clients, uh, social and digital accounts, or we help them with a content calendar to plan out their posts and things like that. Um, but you, you mentioned, uh, as you were introducing me talking about missed opportunities, which I think is a perfect way to describe it because I still, to this day, which kind of surprises me after this many years, I still to this day see a lot of companies and a lot of people missing probably the best opportunity as it relates to their audience in social media. And that's not engaging with their audience on a proactive uh, basis. They react whenever they get a message, whenever they get a comment versus being proactive about it. And that's something that uh, I believe as long as we have social media, I think that'll be... Um, probably uh, a mountain that we have to climb. Well, you know, you a couple of interesting points. When you talk about chaos coordinator, when it comes to business, you're right. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's some days where you're just like, I, I don't know which way I'm going. I don't know which <laughs> way is up. I don't know which way is down. I just mm -hmm. want this day to be over, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, we, I think sometimes, you know, we've we've been taught that success should look like a straight line up, and it doesn't. It looks like a bowl of spaghetti exactly. some days. You know, it goes does. here, there, everywhere, and mm -hmm. around, and twists and turns, Absolutely. and you wonder if you're ever going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that title. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately, um, in terms mm -hmm. of my own social media, is you know, how am I engaging? How am I mm -hmm. creating those relationships? Because I mm -hmm. think that's key today. Like people don't want to be spammed. They don't, they don't want to just, you know, see, buy my mm -hmm. stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. I, I'm really thinking exactly. about, you know, because I, I focus in on LinkedIn right now. You know, mm -hmm. how do I create those relationships? And, you know, how do I mm -hmm. engage with those new connections? I mean, I mm -hmm. gauge fine with, you know, all the people I know and love, like you, you and, right. you know, and Mike and Larry and all those mm -hmm. people. I mean, that's easy, right? But, you but know, it's how... the new connections, it's tough. Yeah, it's exactly. So, what I would love for you to do, John, is can mm -hmm. you just take a little bit and talk about engagement? 
and how you see it today and, and how you feel or, you know, what are the best ways to create that engagement in 2022? Because sure. like you said, we are missing opportunities. I miss opportunities. You know, like I, I want to bang the head against the wall when, <laughs> you know, someone that I've talked to a few times over the years mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're publishing a book with someone else. I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, hello. Like, <laughs> and then I think, yeah, but when remember me. Hello. I, like, when was the last time I talked to that person, right? So right. Mm -hmm. Well, and since you know this is being um, uh, broadcast live on LinkedIn, I'm going to talk about LinkedIn uh, for this specific example, but it can apply to other social platforms. New connections is the most challenging as far as engaging with those new connections, and I started years ago. Uh, when somebody would send me a connection request and we, we all get them, we get the ones that are just the, you know, they click the button and LinkedIn sent it, no personalization. I get the ones that are very personalized, which is fantastic. And of course, you know, you get a mixture of the two. Um, I started several years ago that when somebody would send me a connection request, the first thing that I would do is look and see, okay, who is this person? You know, could we have met somewhere or is it a friend of a friend? Like, Mike introducing the two of us. And a lot of them, we have mutual connections. So at that point, I decided to connect or not to connect with them. And I don't send or I typically do not send a message to them immediately. I kind of wait a little while and see if they're going to send a message. Uh, if I look at from a percentage standpoint, it's probably about 50-50. Uh, some do, some don't. Well, once they do send me a message, I'll reply to them. I'll say, you know, thanks for connecting. Uh, you know, we have some mutual friends. Uh, if I can ever be of service or if I can, you know, uh, help in any way, just let me know. Not selling them anything, but just saying, hey, thanks for connecting. Well, some reply, a lot don't. Uh, it's probably more of a, from a percentage standpoint, probably about 30% reply. Uh, the rest of them may reply or maybe a week later when they reply, which is fine. But then I try to at least once a week, and you know, I, I'm as guilty as the next person, at least once a week, I try to go in and look at those people and look at what they're sharing. But here's the interesting thing about it. A lot of them are still not sharing content. Mm -hmm. So I go look at their profile and say, okay, I would love to engage and comment on something and see what they're up to. And they're not sharing anything. And I think part of the, I think part of the problem for a lot of people on LinkedIn specifically is they're not sure of what to share. And there's still, to a certain extent, there's still that mindset with LinkedIn of, well, that's where you look for a job. I'm not really active on there because I'm not looking for a job. Or I've, I had a friend tell me one time she wasn't active on LinkedIn because her employer was would wonder if she's looking for a job. I'm like, really? But anyway, um, so I think we have to be as proactive as we can be. I heard something and I'm, uh, I'm gonna hate myself for this, but I'm pretty sure it was Jay Bear that published this, talking about, again, connecting, or not connecting, but engaging with people. His plan, and I'm gonna really feel bad if it wasn't Jay, but I think it was, his suggestion and his plan was to go look at your connections, the people that you've been connected with, doesn't matter how long, and you know, go to 25 of their profiles a day, let's say, or pick whatever number you're, you're comfortable with and try to leave a meaningful comment or try to engage with something that they had shared. Again, the real interesting part about that, Kim, I started doing that. You wouldn't believe how many connections I went through that had not shared anything in months. So it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a hard practice that you have to set a goal for yourself. If we're just saying LinkedIn personally or professionally, set a goal for yourself that, okay, this week I'm going to attempt to engage with at least five, 10, 20, 25 of my connections and see what they're sharing, share maybe something that they've shared, or at least leave a meaningful comment on it. That's where I think even today, a huge number of LinkedIn users are completely missing opportunities on LinkedIn because whatever, whatever social platform is your preference, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, whatever it is, 
it's the matter of you showing up consistently and being active. And by being active, I don't mean just going out there and posting something. That's great. But also spend that time proactively going and leaving comments, sharing content from a connection. Uh, one of the one of my favorite things to do, I don't have an opportunity to do it often, but one of my favorite things to do with a new connection request is to share something that they've shared on LinkedIn. And I say I don't get to do it often because people are still not publishing as much as they really should be. Yeah. So yeah, and, it's again, it's something that you have to be proactive about. <clears throat> yeah. And proactive is the word, right? Because it's mm -hmm. like, I think it comes from two different points. You're, you're talking about mm -hmm. the personal work that you do, but you know, what happens when you do that personal work? So, you know, for me, um, you know, from a personal side and LinkedIn side, personally, mm -hmm. then that person starts to also um, feel like I value them. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you share something that they have shared, you know, mm -hmm. the law of re reciprocity takes effect, you know, but it Absolutely creates it that good goodwill, that no like and trust factor. But then well, on the it, LinkedIn it, side, mm -hmm. just on the LinkedIn side, too, because I'm engaging now, not only am I seeing more of their stuff, but they're seeing more of my stuff. Exactly. And I don't care which platform it is. Every single social platform the more active you are engaging, liking, commenting, sharing, the better it is for your own content and the better it is for other people's content that you're commenting on. LinkedIn especially, uh, and I say LinkedIn especially, but really Instagram's the same way, the more people that you can get to actively engage with your content, the better, because that shows LinkedIn or the, the platform, it shows them that, hey, this is good content. We need to show it to more people. We need to show it more often. And it's something that will consistently get more engagement. I mean, I've noticed for myself, the more consistently I share content myself and engage with other people's content, the more my content has better insights, gets more reach, gets more likes, engagements, what, what, you know, however, whatever metric you want to use to determine, hey, is this good content or am I wasting my time? The more active you are, the more well received your content is. And of course, I'm talking more predominantly about LinkedIn, but it works for other platforms as well. I, I see brands uh, that are very active on Instagram, as an example. And they're active within their own account. If somebody comments on a post, they'll reply to the comment. That's great. I mean, that you should be doing that. But where they drop the ball is they're not being active outside of their own content. They're yes. not comment. They're not going and commenting on other people's content. They may like it, but we all have gotten into that habit that we're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. We hit like and scroll, we hit like and scroll, we hit like and scroll, instead of stopping and actively engaging. I, I so agree. And, you know, we hear so much now about the automation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, and automation that, to me doesn't it automation can be good yes. from a standpoint of managing content. Yes. And what I mean by that is, okay, I've got a busy week. So I've scheduled X number of posts to go out on my platforms. Great. But, and this is a huge, but you also day in and day out, even though you have a busy week day in, day out, you still have to go and be active and comment and engage and like and whatever else on other people's content as yes. well as responding to the people that comment on your content because if you don't that content that you're sharing the traction the insights the metrics all of those will just continue to fall until you are or until you become active once again yeah. and and here's the thing so when you when you engage on what people have commented on yours, you're mm -hmm. right. It creates more traction because all of a sudden now 
that post kind of refreshes again because there's more activity on it, then the person mm -hmm. who commented on it is notified that that it was commented <laughs> on. But then mm -hmm. other people outside of the other the person who commented, they see mm -hmm. that there's activity going on as well. So it, you know, it's absolutely that type of engagement is important. And I think too, you know, when you just even thank someone for commenting. You may not always have something yeah. really strong to say, but you know, um, you know, thanks so you can much. At least I acknowledge. appreciate the comment. Yeah. I appreciate the input. You know, absolutely, it, it, it's an acknowledgement, and it's at the very least, it's it, it, you acknowledge that they took time to comment, and you should take it a step further. And I know we don't always have the time to do this, but you should take it a step further and click their profile and see what they shared most recently and leave a comment. And yes, it's reciprocal. Um, some people say, well, you're kind of, you know, trying to trick the algorithm, but I'd say, yes, I absolutely am. Absolutely. 100%. Because if, if we don't take that proactive stance with our content, and the content that our connections and our followers are sharing, the social platforms can continue and will continue to do whatever they want with the algorithm. Mm -hmm. They'll show us what they want to show us. Um, and that's why really the only way that we can fine tune what we see in our feeds is by being proactive. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's an investment of time. And it's an investment in your business and it's an investment in your own personal brand to be mm -hmm. active in this manner because it shows people that you are there, that you are taking part, that you're just not a, you know, what we like to say, post it and forget it, uh, which is what a lot a of user. people still do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're a user. You, you, uh, it, it's like a megaphone that you're just broadcasting everything out, but you're not taking anything in and you're not, trying to create that community. And that's one of the biggest advantages of these digital, these social channels, is that you can create that community as long as you are active and proactive. You know, when you were talking about that, John, something I was thinking about is um, I had connected with a gentleman on LinkedIn a few months ago. I made sure I commented on his stuff. He started commenting mm -hmm. on my stuff. I sent him a copy of my book. I just recently mm -hmm. had him on the podcast and, you know, I was thinking about that in terms of, you know, using LinkedIn to create that connection. And especially if you're looking to build your business, like one thing I was mm -hmm. thinking of um, and one of the reasons why I am now doing the podcast live on LinkedIn as well, first of mm -hmm. all, it's content, but mm -hmm. I wanted to focus in on actually promoting my guests more and, and getting mm -hmm. their names out there more. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, creating that connection. So here's my mm -hmm. idea just popped into my head. I would love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> I love it. it. Okay. But I was thinking, you know, how beneficial would it be, you know, to with some of the new connections, because not obviously not everyone would be a perfect fit for your, your clientele. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking it would be really cool if, you know, you started offering to interview. So these, these oh. new connections. So obviously I, I do it like through that. the podcast, sure. but you know, Absolutely. you could do a LinkedIn live with someone. Mm -hmm. um, you yep. could do, they have the audio rooms now. So like the clubhouse, like I'm going to be starting to play mm -hmm. around with that one. Um, yep. You know, but that would be a great yep. way of taking, you know, uh, from engagement to actual connection. Yep. I like that. That's a great idea. I, I, I love that because what you're doing, uh, my first take is you're taking that connection and you're trying to elevate it to the next step. You're not just leaving it as a connection on LinkedIn or a follower on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. You're taking that connection and you're elevating it. And I also think it'll have an added benefit, maybe not the right word, but I think it is an added benefit. It'll also kind of help to weed out serious connection requests, serious connections versus, oh, well, I saw that you were a friend of John Smith, so I'm going to click connect. 
And uh, let's be real. Let's be realistic. We all get those. And again, I'm not saying anything against those people. They may be a good connection request. They may not be. But I think it'll also, you'll find the ones that really want to connect and take it to a next level. And you'll find ones that won't. But I think that's a wonderful idea. I like that a lot. Yeah, because like I've been thinking about the relationships, right? Like we all want to build mm -hmm. our business. But business mm -hmm. is built on relationships, you know, especially businesses 100%. like yours and mine, right? Like we're not mm -hmm. a factory, you know, we're not a retail store. We're, we're service-based businesses. Mm -hmm. yep. Now we 100%. may have employees or people who work for us or whatever, but, mm -hmm. you know, we're not a traditional store in that sense. And, you Correct. know, for me, I've, I've been thinking about, you know, how do I develop those relationships mm -hmm. you know how how do i create those relationships that then mm -hmm. you know build my business on top of it because absolutely when you build that relationship then all of a sudden you come to mind it, it was funny quite a mm -hmm. few years ago before covid i was at a networking meeting and i mm -hmm. i was sitting in a group of people and i met this one gentleman and you know he uh, he was interested in possibly writing a book. You know, we had some mm -hmm. conversations. I connected with him on social media. You know, I was commenting on his stuff, things like that. Um, and it didn't work out with him. And that was fine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the right timing. You know, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Cool. Absolutely. But because I kind of stayed in his mind, mm -hmm. the moment a friend of his said he wanted to write a book, because I had Up created that no like, and trust factor. I had invested mm -hmm. in him. I'd given him some value, created the relationship. Guess who got mm -hmm. the business? Exactly. Because you were top of mind. You, you stayed in connection with them. And you were proactive about that connection. And really, the way that I personally and even professionally look at social is you're planting these seeds. Some of these seeds may yield something today. Some may yield something tomorrow. Some may yield something a year or five years from now. Some may never yield me anything, but it may yield someone else something. So you're planting something and you're nurturing it. And I, I mean, I, I know people that I have been connected with for 10 years that we may have done in those 10 years, one piece of business together but we've referred each other to other businesses. We've helped each other out with other projects that were not business related. So it was a valuable connection. And I look at each connection as it having potential value. And when I say potential value, I don't mean business for me, that's yeah. a bonus, but I mean potential value as in my own network, or maybe it's somebody that I could refer to you because they're talking about wanting to, to write a book. Maybe it's someone I could refer to Mike. I look at it as that connection request can be valuable to me and my network in some manner, but only if they're open to that. And only if that, only if they respond to me being proactive to them. I so agree. So agree. <laughs> so, so John, we're just mm -hmm. about at the end of the podcast here. Um, Time flies when we have fun. <laughs> oh, I know. It go, You know what? This half an hour goes by so fast. I'm like, oh, we could go so many other places. But I, I chose a half an hour because most people, if they're listening to the car on the way home or whatever, they're taking a break. True. That half an hour is a good one. So you it's are going to come spot. back on. And we're, we're going to do another one, to. probably in a month <laughs> or two. Uh, but John, if people have enjoyed listening to you today, if they've mm -hmm. gotten value, if they're like, okay, I really need to connect with John, what are the Absolutely. best ways to connect with you? Well, we're sitting here on LinkedIn, so I'm easy to find on LinkedIn. Actually, I'm pretty easy to find anywhere. It's just John Lusher. It's very unique. Not the only one around, but it's unique enough that you'll be able to find me and my smiling face and bald head. Um, my uh, company is The Social Buzz Lab. Our website is webuildbuzz.com. And I can promise you that 
uh, my website is out of date, but that's because I'm helping people like you and Mike and a few other people with their websites. And uh, I keep telling Rich, you know, we need to get on revamping my website. And in the next breath, I'm like, I've got another project for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, you but you can easily, easily connect with me on LinkedIn. And anyone that sees this, I would love for you to, you know, send a connection request uh, and, and, you know, let's proactively connect with one another. And let John know that you heard him on the Author to Authority podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I've enjoyed it, Kim. Thank you. So this has been John Lusher and Kim Thompson Pinder on the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And we will see you on the very next episode. Bye now. Thank you. <laughs>